the deliberations with the state parties in the uh, convention committee as well as the uh, hearing with the uh, stakeholders during the octopus learn that there's a sense of urgency that we should better equip police and judiciary to access data and then evidence abroad. On the other hand, it showed that there's great concern that we will have to meet the safeguards concerning at first the data users and second, of course, industry. I'm quite confident that we will uh, uh, continue to work uh, towards a protocol that will satisfy all, but it will be a bumpy road. Uh, and it takes uh, for both of the communities, being at first the judiciary and police and the prosecutors and on the other side, industry, civil society and academia, to understand each other more from a joint perspective, perspective not only from the perspective of criminal justice or the perspective of data protection and safeguard of human rights. Convention. The Budapest Convention is right now the only legally binding uh, instrument on fight against cybercrime. Right now it has uh, 60 parties, uh, many countries have been invited to accede to the convention, plus many countries have signed the convention. However, the convention, although it, it has global effect and proved to be effective, technology has developed. And uh, therefore, for many, many years, the uh, Council of Europe Cyber Convention Committee started to analyze and uh, think about additional protocol to the convention. Right now, we are in the process of drafting the protocol. The protocol will address, uh, will address uh, important issues as how to facilitate international cooperation, how to ensure access to electronic evidence in cyberspace. It's a difficult issue, it's a controversial issue, and uh, we have spent lots of time already and we hope to finalize the protocol by next year. It would be an important step ahead. It's many practitioners in the world, they have serious problems in getting access to the data in cyberspace, and we hope that protocol would provide necessary solutions and uh, make international cooperation more efficient than ever before. Effectivement, ce, ce, deux, ce deuxième protocole à la Convention de Budapest, euh, consacré essentiellement aux questions de coopération internationale, permettra effectivement donc de compléter la Convention de Budapest, la Convention de Budapest, la Convention mère, sur un certain nombre de points importants. Parce que, comme vous le savez, la cybercriminalité constitue une criminalité internationale qui ignore donc les frontières des, des, des différents États. Donc, c'est la raison pour laquelle il a paru absolument nécessaire de consolider les mécanismes de coopération, donc d'approfondir la coopération sur un certain nombre de points qui posaient quelquefois des difficultés pratiques. Euh, on pense nécessairement à la question de la coopération avec les fournisseurs de services, qui est un problème assez crucial, assez, assez compliqué. Mais je pense que l'un des points les plus importants de ce protocole additionnel à la Convention de Budapest, ce deuxième protocole, c'est de traiter de la question de l'accès transfrontalier aux données. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, c'est une question très sensible qui très souvent met en avant des questions de souveraineté internationale, de souveraineté des États. Et je pense que ce deuxième protocole contribuera à apporter des réponses pertinentes à cette question de euh, l'accès transfrontalier aux données et permettra euh, aux États donc, de disposer des mécanismes juridiques pertinents pour euh, échanger des informations, ce qui me semble absolument nécessaire pour la lutte efficace contre le phénomène de la cybercriminalité. Transborder access to data is one of the uh, challenges, uh, and, and it is the, the, the most important challenge that we build uh, at this time. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be really important to have the new protocol in place, uh, not only to improve the efficiency of, of, uh, of the penal system, uh, also to contribute to the uh, good relation, good international re relation between the countries, and uh, to have uh, safeguard, adequate safeguard to the citizens when uh, we use these kind of uh, tools that, uh, that allow to obtain evidence in different, uh, in different countries. Alors, la question est de savoir si un protocole 
traditionnelle, à la commençant euh, sur la cybercriminalité, est nécessaire euh, pour garantir la, la protection des données. Je crois que la, la question principale euh, n'est pas de savoir s'il faut mettre en place un protocole, mais c'est de voir comment euh, la protection des données doit être prise en compte dans le cadre de la lutte contre la cybercriminalité. La cybercriminalité, tout le monde est d'accord, c'est une nécessité euh, absolue, mais elle doit se faire dans le respect des normes euh, en vigueur, notamment de la Convention euh, 108 euh, du Conseil de l'Europe euh, en matière de protection des données, mais également euh, dans le respect de la Convention euh, européenne des droits de l'homme, et notamment son article 8 qui garantit le droit euh, à la vie privée. Donc, si l'on veut donner élargir les possibilités des autorités de, de poursuite pénale dans le cas de la lutte contre la cybercriminalité, il conviendra de définir précisément euh, quel type de crime on veut poursuivre, euh, quelle autorité est impliquée, quel fournisseur de services doit donner des informations et à quelles euh, conditions. Euh, il s'agit de tenir compte du principe de, de proportionnalité, euh, d'assurer aussi euh, les droits des personnes concernées, euh, notamment le droit d'accès, mais aussi le droit d'obtenir la rectification de données inexactes ou l'effacement de données qui ont été collectées de manière, de manière illicite. Euh, un autre aspect important, c'est que dans la communication, et notamment les communications électroniques, il s'agit de garantir la sécurité des données et là, c'est le plus haut niveau de sécurité possible. On est là dans, des, dans un contexte très sensible, donc il faudra par exemple recourir à des procédures de chiffrement des, des données. C'est très important pour le comité de protection parce que, pour apporter les nouveaux et modernes Uh, principles of data protection into the work of TCY and to integrate in the new second um, additional protocol to the Budapest Convention. We believe it's uh, Council of Europe is the ideal place and the ideal institution to um, to regulate uh, such a uh, such a topic as we have the rule of law instruments in the Budapest Convention and we have the Convention 108 and the modernized version of the Convention which, uh, which uh, entails the human rights part of the, of the, of the question. Uh, well, Internet users are very much intrigued by the question how much privacy they will have on the Internet and what are the um, reasonable expectations for them in terms of privacy. So it's very important for us to bring the message by our committee uh, to, the, to, the, to the work of the TCY that uh, the modern uh, protection of privacy and individuals in a greater sense to be incorporated in work and in the provisions of the TCY or and the second additional protocol to the Budapest Convention. Because if the individuals are feeling that they have a narrow sense of privacy on the internet, they will find new ways of communicating, they will find new ways to ensure them the privacy, which is not ideal in our sense, as that will lead to a less effective uh, fight uh, against cybercrime. So we think this is the two phase of the of the equation or two parts of this equation that we need to uh, put on a pair and we are here to help. We are here to help uh, in that our colleagues on cybercrime in the cybercrime committee. Civil society wants to be involved in every single part of the negotiations of the second additional protocol to the Cybercrime Convention because we want to avoid a race to the bottom in terms of human rights safeguards. We concretely have three recommendations. The first one is the first one is to focus on mutual legal assistance reform. We see that there are some inefficiencies identified. However, that doesn't mean that we should find shortcuts uh, to avoid complying with certain uh, safeguards in terms of procedure and human rights protections. The second recommendation is to bring national practices and legal frameworks 
in compliance with case law of the Court of Justice um, of uh, the European Union, but also of the European Court of Human Rights. And finally, we recommend to render human rights requirements operational. I represent a global coalition of civil society organizations who work to ensure that our fundamental rights get respected in the digital age. First, we want to congratulate the Cybertime Convention Committee for their work on improving the MLAT uh, regime. Uh, the MLATs have been criticized as being inefficient to deal with di digital evidence. However, the problems are more procedural and financial rather than su substantive in nature. Second, transborder access to data or subscriber data uh, should respect fundamental rights and freedom. For example, uh, significant concerns arise on cross-border access to data for immigrants and refugees uh, in the cases of automated profiling. We want to make sure that our fundamental rights embodied in Article 15 of the Budapest Conventions get respected in the digital age as, as also technology evolves over time. Finally, we would like to ask the Cybercrime Committee Convention to be able to be part of the plenary meetings as an ad hoc observers, like we requested in our letter signed by 99 NGOs around the world. Thank you. The work on the protocol to the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime is of major importance. First of all, the Cybercrime Convention is the only international treaty that brings together 60 states already as uh, parties to the convention coming from all continents in the world and more states are waiting. It is de facto the gold standard for fighting cybercrime. However, with the development of cloud services and more and more evidence essential for law enforcement being held in the cloud, it is also vital that law enforcement is enabled worldwide to obtain access to this, to this evidence to fight cybercrime, to prevent terrorist attacks. The Council of Europe, the Council of Europe is also the best placed uh, body to do so because the organisation is based on the principles of human rights and rule of law in democracy. Uh, it is the human rights aspects and rule of law aspects that have to be combined to ensure that this protocol not only enables law enforcement to be effective but to do so respectful of human rights.